Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you very much for joining the channel. I know a lot of you subscribed recently, so thank you very much for your time. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to be talking about post-processing effects. I, in the previous video, we went through some of the effects such as depth of field and also color grading. In this one, I want to cover grain, big netting, and bloom. So, and I might, if I have time at the end, I might cover ambient occlusion as well. So let's actually jump into Unity and start looking at the game that I'm building to apply some of these effects. Thank you. All right, guys, so this is a scene that I want to work on in this video. It basically contains a series of props that I'm gonna be using in my new game. And I added a couple of more things on the back because I really wanted to pay attention to how the effects that you add are gonna be applied to the scene. So if I look at the scene right now, it looks really boring. The colors are, they actually don't come out. It's, you know, we're getting very a very subtle coloring scheme on the on, on the entire scene. So last time we, we played with color grading and the profile. So those are the effects that I have that I'm gonna be enabling. So if I actually change the way and we go to, you know, to one from zero to one, you can see that everything starts to stand out a little bit more. The colors start to look much better. And I'm actually gonna move, looks like I added these, but they are not touching the floor. So let me actually move them down just a tiny bit. So that, that our scene looks better. Okay, let's actually move these down as well. And perfect. And looks like I'm getting some errors. Okay, looks like that's fine. And if we go back into our game view, okay, so that looks a lot better. Okay, perfect. So what I want you to do is actually click on the camera and we're gonna be focusing on, on a few effects. I'm gonna start with grain. So if I click on grain, you can see that every theme on the scene is, is very, you know, it looks very digitally, or if that's the word, or digital, very clean. And, but I wanna, I wanna give it more of a, a classic look. So if I give, if I enable grain and we go to the intensity and actually increase the intensity a little bit, you can kinda see that it starts to look like we're old TVs. So I'm actually gonna change the size as well. And you can kind of see that that gives it that, that older look. I'm actually gonna go down in size and right about there. And then the intensity, I'm gonna keep the intensity about 0.7. So let's do 0.7 on the intensity and 0.5 on the size. And then you have other settings that I, that I never actually enable, but if you wanted particles or the grains actually to be you know, color, you can enable that as well. And there's also a setting for luminance contribution that you can play play around with as well. So I'm gonna actually add a new effect and let's actually play with the bloom. So if you see, if you notice, I have a lamp on the on this side and the lights really don't look that well. It just looks like a little glow on a, on a white and yellow shape. So if I enable if I enable bloom and I increase the intensity, that's actually gonna bring it, you know, it's gonna look more realistic. So I'm actually gonna do 3.5 and I'm also gonna show you the the shader that I have applied to that lamp. So if we go to straight underscore light, it's actually a straight light, not a lamp. So let's see, so and then click on the light. So I have particle standard only that I have enabled and I have the rendering mode set, set to addictive. The same thing with the color mode. And you can actually play with some of the colors here if I want it to be, you know, maybe maybe a little bit of that, or I want it to be green or some, you know, different color. You can play with some of these. I left mine, at, you know, kind of a yellowish color. The emission, kind of change that as well. Something about, something about that. And to be honest, a lot of this comes with tweaking. I go back and forth a lot of times when I'm, you know, when I'm designing my levels and I want I want the level to look in a specific way. So it's okay if you're going back and forth and, and trying different settings. That's actually what I do most of the time. So let's actually go back to the camera and we're gonna be playing with the intensity. So if you want it to be something right about there, you can also play with some of the other settings such as the threshold so if I want it to be, you know, very, very bright, then I'm actually not even gonna enable that. I don't think it looks it looks good with my, and you can play with the soft knee. So you can see how that is actually affecting the entire scene. 
I'm actually going to enable this one just a tiny bit so that the that the entire area becomes a little lighter. And right about point, point 0.5 works fine. And they also have a fast mode that I recommend that you enable for, you know, for mobile devices. So if you enable that, or even for, yeah, desktop applications, desktop games that you're creating. Some of these settings, I, I had a lot of questions from, from people whether you should be using them in mobile games. I, you know, it's like everything, anything that you enable that is a post-processing effects, it's going to be very expensive. So you want to watch your stats, you want to look at the profiler and make sure that you, you know, you're either running on a high-end device or if you want to target some of the slower devices, you want to make sure that you are, you know, not enabling post-processing effects. So there's many, many things that you need to consider when you're enabling post-processing and performance is an issue so be careful when you start playing with some of these effects so okay so we have bloom enable we also have grain the other one that i think we you'll really like is ambient occlusion so let's enable ambient occlusion and i'm actually going to click on the intensity and you can kind of see that as soon as i do that you start to get shadows around the areas which it actually mimics real life so we can play with Let's play with the thickness modifier as well. So I think I'm just gonna give it just a tiny bit. And I don't really wanna change the color of that, so I think that's fine. You also have two different type of modes, a scalable ambient obscurance and multi-scale volumetric obscurance, which I really haven't played with much, but you can kind of see that this one doesn't really apply it's just applying to certain areas, but not, not to everything. So if you go, if we hover over the mode, it actually explains. So the ambient occlusion method that we use is multi-scale volumetric occurrence, is higher quality and faster on desktop and console platforms, but requires compute shader support. So if we go back to the, yeah, which is, so this one is gonna be more expensive and it looks a lot better. But like I said on the other effects, just be careful when you're enabling some of these settings. And the thickness modifier. You can also play with the color if we wanted to change the, actually go back and change this back to right about there and the intensity. I think I'm happy with that intensity. You can see that it's getting applied to the edges. The colors, if you want it to be you know, we're getting a light, kind of a yellowish reflection. So you could play with, you know, a little bit of yellow, but not, not that much. Right about there. I think I'm happy with that. And that's ambient occlusion. Okay, so now if you look at the scene and we actually hit play, you can kind of see that everything is starting to come out and, and get a better look and feel. So we're getting, you know, the, the shadows within the edges of each element in 3D. You can kind of see that happening here, that's happening here. It's happening all around. So that's the ambient occlusion doing that. Also the, the edges on the rectangle here on the floor. So that's actually looking really, really well. If you go to the scene view, you can kind of see that some of those are actually visible in the scene view as well. There's our ambient occlusion we can see the, the lighting actually getting some of that bloom effect. And if I go back here and I actually change the way, you're gonna see how it's changing. Everything is changing in real time. So if I change the way, it's actually looking boring and getting better there. Let me actually focus on the, there we go. So if I go, and that's looking much better. So let's go back into the game view and hit play one more time. So there are some other effects that I'm gonna be covering on the on the next video. So on the next video, I'm gonna be showing you chromatic aberration, lens distortion, and then auto exposure as well. And I might touch some of the other ones. Oh, and one that I didn't show you is vignetting. So let's actually add that one because I wanna show you that one in this video. And this is one that I use quite a bit. I, I actually, I apply a lot of igniting in the games that I work on. So you can use what's called the classic one, which is computer. The, this one is more resource intensive. If you do a mask, you can actually create a texture and 
that basically resembles the vignetting. So vignetting, what it's going to do is actually going to add a darker area around the surroundings. So if I go to classic and we change the intensity, you can kind of see if I do that and we can actually change the smoothness. So if I go back, let's actually go back a tiny bit. So there's no, that's actually pretty, pretty sharp. You can see there, the edges are very, very sharp. So if you were creating a, maybe a game about a sniper, and this was basically the area that the sniper is targeting, then you could use something like that for, you know, for that kind of mechanic. The, I'm going to actually add a smoothness, and I'm going to bring back the intensity. And we can do something about, something like that works. Also, if you wanted to, to change the center, you can change the center. You can kind of see how that is getting applied. If we wanted to change the y-axis, we could do that as well. This could be kind of an intro to a game, to a level. You can animate those ones as well. And you can also change it whether you want it to be rounded or not rounded. We can actually use rounded. I think that looks really good. So we can do something about there. You can also change the color. So if I wanted to change the color to be, you know, more of a reddish color or maybe a yellowish color, I'm actually going to go back to black. I like the minimal styles. And you can also change the roundness. So if you wanted to go, you know, tweak that as well, you can you can tweak it. I'm actually going to leave it at one. And that's, let's actually hit play. And that is basically our scene. So I, I hope you appreciate the video and you like the video. The, the, the next video, I'm going to be covering some of the other effects. And I think that's going to be wrapping up post-processing effects for now. I also going to be creating a video about how to enable some of these settings programmatically. And the use case for that could be, you know, you might not want to enable some of these settings in certain platforms and specifically with mobile devices, but you might want to enable that for desktop applications. So if, you, if you're interested in that, keep, you know, stay tuned because I'm going to be adding some of those, you know, so, some of those videos where we're going to be able to basically toggle each one of these or even some of the settings between the effects themselves. So that's what I wanted to cover today, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And don't forget to comment if you have any questions. And don't forget to subscribe and share the video. Thank you.